the Raw Some Truth. Today I want to talk to you about Band-Aid fixing our problems. What I mean by Band-Aid fixing our problems is looking for something as a quick fix to solve that empty feeling. Now, it's funny, the other day I was tagged into a post by a guy who's selling off all his stuff and um, getting his stuff down to just fitting in his car. That's his aim at this point in time. And I was reading the comments through on it and a guy that we're shared friends with, um, he wrote, you know what, no matter what I've purchased over the years, and he said he's been addicted to consumerism, like many of us, um, he said nothing healed that empty heart. And I resonated with that straight away because for most of my adult life, I've always said, I feel so empty and I don't know why. And um, I don't feel that empty feeling now. Um, but that's, a, it, that's another video. I can link in there my sobriety story. It talks about why I don't feel empty anymore. But that empty feeling, and I know exactly what he's talking about because I've done it so often I did it with alcohol you know I'd, I'd have the drink I'd get the you know that feel good feeling and then I'd have to come down and feel like crap again I did it with shopping um so badly I was in a lot of debt today is a brilliant day for me because it's a day that I'm actually saying wow I owe next to nothing um I've got about two more payments left and I'm totally debt free. So it's an um, amazing day. And so if you are in debt, don't think it's the end of things, but that'll be another video. Anyhow, and I've done it that many times. I've bought things and, you know, I get that quick high and then that slump of, wow, what have I done? Um, why did I buy this? Why did I eat this? Why did I have this? Etc. Etc. So it's really one of those um, things that we've really got to think about in our lives. Are we band-aid fixing things? And the same goes with food. Are we band-aid fixing ourselves with food? And you know, it's so easy to do. You, um, you're feeling low, so I'll have a chocolate bar. I'm feeling low, I'm going to get pizza. I'm feeling low, I'm going to eat ice cream. Whatever it is, or, you know, um, I don't feel right today. Oh, oh, I can't eat. I don't want to eat healthy. I want to eat that. And that actually makes you feel worse. You think it's going to make you feel better, because at that moment when all of a sudden you're having that pizza or ice cream or whatever you sort of go mm, yeah that's great and then all of a sudden you feel like crap your body feels heavy you um you're feeling you know congested in your bowels your digestion's not working and you actually feel worse so why do we do this i believe we do it because our lives become meaningless when we have meaningless lives we're looking for something to fill that hole. So we need to have meaning in our life, whatever that may be. And I've had people in the past, you know, when I've said, you know, my, I like, my life feels empty, I've got nothing, blah, 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 blah. People have said to me, but you know, you've got a family, you've got this and that. Not to say I don't love my family, I adore my family, but that wasn't giving me that actual meaning in my life. I needed something to be me meaningful in my life. And um, for me, it's been um, clearing out past hurts, um, forgiveness, forgiving a lot of people in my life, and also seeking forgiveness. You know, we're so quick to say, I want everyone to forgive me, and, you know, we can play the victim, but we have to remember that we've probably hurt people too. And I know I did because hurt people hurt people. That's that's what happens so seeking forgiveness for me was another thing spirituality um whatever that may be don't uh, you might be hearing me now going oh, i don't believe in gold what's she on about look it doesn't have to be that it's having some form of spirituality um whatever that may be for you and i think that's a huge thing for me i know it's a massive thing um they've run studies and the people um that um are more likely to overcome mental illness are people who have spirituality in their life so you know seek something that you can resonate with and that can give you some purpose and some meaning in your life
I think having goals, setting goals for yourself is a big thing and achieving them. Don't go and set goals that are so astronomical that all of a sudden you say, you know what, I'm a failure. Look at setting achievable goals, smart goals. And if you're setting those achievable goals, bit by bit, you can up the ante and say, you know what, I'm achieving things. And when you're achieving things in your life, your life has meaning. Um, be a part of something. Um, for me, um, I'm a part of a lot of things. I'm a part of an activist group. Um, so I feel I'm doing something, um, you know, for the environment, for the animals, um, for the vegan movement. Um, I, I have um, forums. I've got a raw vegan forum, which is a very large one, which is a big part of my life. And it gives me meaning. Um, I have my own personal social media page, which I run, which for me, it gives me meaning. I have a YouTube channel, which gives me purpose. It gives me meaning. Um, I feel like I'm getting my message out there. You know, start a YouTube channel. Um, start posting on your Facebook. Start an Instagram page. Start a forum. Do what you have to do, but give yourself some meaning in your life. Um, be active. I find the more active I am, the better I feel. Um, when I'm feeling good, I'm not looking for those band-aid fixes. I'm not looking for a quick, you know, buying a top that's going to make me feel so much better. I'm not looking to eat a slice of pizza because it'll make me feel better. I'm looking, you know, the healthier I am, the more active I am, the more I want to eat healthy. So I think that's really important too. Um, also, another thing is spend quality time with your family and friends. And when I say quality time, we can spend time with our family and friends, but we might not be with them. We're actually with them, but we're not. We might be on our phone. We might be on the computer and whatever. And it's really spending that quality time. Um, I know since my children have not been living at home with me, they're adults, um, I just appreciate having my phone, like I speak to them on the phone and that time I have just speaking to them on the phone has become so valuable, whereas I took it for granted before. So don't take those little babies for granted because then they go. Um, you know, have, um, another thing is um, create interest for yourself. So when I say create interest, you know, um, it might be, you might like painting, you might not like knitting, you might like bushwalking, you might like bike riding, whatever it is, create interest. When you create interest for yourself, you seem to find people with common interests. When you're surrounded by people who have common interests with you, you feel like you're part of something. And when you feel like you're part of something, it brings a lot of meaning back into your life. Um, I think for me, they've been a lot of the most important parts for me for overcoming my consumerism, um, for overcoming eating addictions, for overcoming my alcohol and drug um, addictions. So, you know, and it's taken me a long time. I mean, I've been sober now for nine and a half years, but I picked up other addictions on the way because I hadn't solved the problem as to why I was addicted. You know, I over-exercised to the extreme where I damaged my body. Um, I set myself up for failure so much because I expected myself to do too much. And that was all part of my addiction, my all part of my having to be perfect. So that's another thing is, you know, realizing you don't have to be perfect, realizing you don't have to be what society expects of you. And that was a huge thing for me, being able to say, hey, I'm me. I want to be me. I don't want to be what my mother wants to, me to be. I don't want to be, you know, even what your partner wants you to be, what your children expect you to be. I mean, please be a good parent. But um, it's about saying, you know what, I'm me. And for me, that was a huge thing. I'd been a, I've been a mother since I was 18. So I've always been someone's daughter, someone's mother, someone's wife, whatever. So for me, it was all, it was trying to work out who am I? And um, when you become you and you don't listen to what anyone else wants you to be, you just be who you are. That for me was the most freeing feeling um, because I'm me. Um, so they're just some of the things for me that have helped me with my over consumerism, my addictions, my band-aid fixes. I don't look for band-aid fixes nowadays. I look at the problem because we're still going to have them, doesn't matter how free we are, I look at the problem and say, how can I solve this?
And if the problem's too big for me, I ask for help, which is something I never used to do. And if it's a problem with people or a problem in a situation, if it's not making me happy, if it doesn't gel with me, guess what I do now? I walk away. So I hope this helps you guys. Um, that's my uh, tips for today on Band-Aid Fixes. Lovely to see you all. Subscribe to my channel. Like my video. And um, I'll see you next time. And remember, don't take lives. Live life.